and we can play, we can pause, we can unpause, we can stop, we can play, we can skip tracks. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Before we get into the video, just a massive shout out to my Patreons, James Welch, Selwyn, Basic Terror, and Fruzel CC. As always, thank you so much for your support. It really does mean a lot. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Easy Game Mechanics. In this episode, I will be adding sound. I've created four UI buttons along the bottom. It's one single sprite that just has four frames with a different icon on each, and the animation speed is set to zero. Over in my project folder, all I have is the generic text and the background and a player icon which we won't be using in this episode. So I've got absolutely nothing, nothing on the event sheet. Double click, the first thing we need to do is add the mouse. Because we're going to want to be able to click these objects to tell the system when to play the music. We also need to double click and we need to add in the audio under media because we need to be able to import audio and play audio. So let's go ahead and import some audio. If we come over to the sound folder, you can right click and you can import sounds. Click on the import audio and then navigate to the sound file that you want to import. If you don't have any sound files, you can come over to my itch page, which is xanderwood.itch.io, and I have a number of free music assets that you can download and use in this project. Okay, I've just added four tracks from my Mythical Forest sound pack, and I'm gonna hit import. And there they are, they're showing up in the sounds folder, just where we imported them. Now we need to tell the system to play one when we hit the play button. So let's head over to the event sheet. Add an event, mouse, on click, on object clicked on left clicked and then we're going to pick the object the UI button sprite so when we click this object we want the system to start doing things however we have four different buttons here and we need a way to tell them apart so click on anyone you like go over to the left hand side and click instance variables add a new instance variable and this one is just going to be called type and let's give it a string uh, let's call it a string and the initial value we'll just leave it blank and click OK. Now we need to give each one of these their own individual name. So this one is the play button so again click on it, head over to the left hand side in the instance variable type now you have the option to type. I'm going to call that one play. On the next one I'm going to call that one stop. This one is going to be called pause and this one is going to be called skip. So these are the functions we're going to give the player. We're going to have play, stop, pause and skip. So we can cycle through these tracks based on what we're doing or what the input the user. So we can cycle through these tracks based on the user's input. So now over in the event sheet we can create a sub event underneath this event. So click on the little green arrow, highlight the whole thing, hit B, double click and we're going to compare this sprite's instance variable, the one that we just created, the string. So if this string, if the name of the instance variable is called play, because that's the first one, then we can copy that whole thing, the whole uh, block, control C on the keyboard, control V to, to create a copy. And now we can double click and change this to stop. Let me do it two more times. and for skip so now what we're telling the system is when we click this button if the instance variable is any of these four things then we're going to do something different so let's go to the play one first add an action and say audio and we're going to hit play and we're going to find our tracks they're all in the drop down here and we're just going to select track one and we're going to play it looping and then the volume zero is the highest volume that it allows you to put in and then you can subtract and go minus decibels to make it uh, less loud etc and then in the tags we can call this track one now when we play if i hit play 
it plays the first song. But we don't have any other way of controlling it right now. So let's add something in to stop. So when we hit stop, we're going to go audio and we're going to stop all because we don't know which track is going to be playing at the time. So let me just show you. If we were to hit stop, it would ask us for the tag and we could just say track one, which would work if we only had one track. But because we're going to have multiple tracks and we don't know which one might be playing, and when we hit stop, we wanted to stop all the music, we're just going to hit stop all and that will be fine. Now for paused, we're going to need to do something a little bit different because if I say add action and we say audio and we say set paused, it's going to ask us for that tag again and again. Like with the first one, we don't know which track is going to be playing. So we need to create an instance variable to control that. So right click, add an instance variable and let's call it track and we'll set the default value to one because we're going to have four tracks in total. So when we load the level up, it's going to automatically default to track one, which will be absolutely fine. Now when we say uh, hit pause, we're going to say audio and we're going to set pause. In the quotation marks, we're going to write track because if you look, if you remember up here, we've set the tag to track one. But what we're going to do is let the global variable control which track we're going to pause by putting an AND symbol after the quotation marks and then we're going to put in the global variable track. So we're going to say set pause track and the track number of the global variable. So every time we pause it we're going to, we're going to pause this track. So now we need a way to change this based on what song is playing and that's where skip comes in. So when we press the skip button, all we're going to do is simply say system and we're going to add one to track. So now when we play it, we should be able to stop the music, play it again and also pause it, but the skip button isn't going to work. So let's see if that does work. So it stops and we can pause it. But there's a few things that we need to fix because if we play it and then pause it, if we click pause again, nothing happens, so we can't unpause it. And if we click play, it plays it back from the beginning again. So let's go back into the event sheet and create a Boolean that can control whether the music is paused or not. So right click, add another global variable. This one is going to say paused and it's going to be a Boolean. And initially it's going to be unchecked because it's not going to be paused when we start playing. Now when we click the pause button, instead of saying pause the track, we're going to add an action and we're going to just change that boolean. So we're going to say set boolean paused to true. In fact, what would be better, instead of saying that, we can just toggle it and then it will just toggle on and off. So instead of saying set boolean, let's just say toggle boolean because that way every time we click it, it's going to be in the right cycle. Now, we're not going to need this line of code in here anymore. So we're going to create a new event and we're going to compare that boolean pause. So we're going to say if the game is paused, then pause the track and track number. And then we're going to simply select the whole block and push X, which makes it an else statement. And we're going to copy that down. And then we're going to change pause to resume. So you can see it works perfectly with the pause button now. However, there is a bug because, because I've got the music paused right now. So if I unpause it, it continues to play. But if I hit play while it's paused, you can see nothing happens. But now if I go to unpause it, it's playing the, the track again over the top of the other track. So the way we're going to get around that is by adding a condition to play. So select this line of code here and push C on the keyboard and we're going to say system and we're going to check that boolean of paused. So we're going to say if we click play and we're not paused then we can play track one. We don't need to do anything else with that because if the game is paused that simply won't work and play won't be available. So now I've paused it, I've hit play and you can see it doesn't restart the track. 
Okay, let's clean up a couple of things. Let's firstly put this same code in that we have down here that says track and track up here when we click play because we're going to use that global variable to control which track we're playing. So we're going to say track and then we're going to add in the ampersand and symbol and then click, not one, the global variable track. That's going to make things a little cleaner as we go along. Now, when we push stop, the control stop, if we're paused, I want it to unpause it um, as well. Otherwise, when we go to click play again, the play isn't going to work. Let me show you. So I hit play. We hit pause. We hit stop. And now I click play and nothing happens because we're paused. And it's not going to play until I unpause it. And now I can click play and now I can click play again. So now, when we hit stop, I want to unpause the Boolean. So add an action, system, and then we're gonna set the Boolean of paused to false. So now we have this other issue where, where if we hit pause when there's nothing playing and then we hit play, we can't play anything because we paused everything. So we need to add another condition into the event sheet that says when we push pause, let's only pause it if something is playing. So select the block here, push C to add a condition and let's go into audio. And now the audio conditions are is any playing, is tag playing, is preloads complete and it is silent. So let's go with is any playing. So if anything is playing, then we can pause. Otherwise it's not gonna let us do that. So let's hit play and see if that works. So now if I hit play, it works. If I hit pause and then I hit play, it still works because it's only gonna pause it if something's playing which we can do right there. Now we need a way to see which track is playing. So let's add a text. Click on the screen. You can change it to whatever text you want. I'm just gonna leave it at the default and I'm gonna set the initial text to say track. Now in the event sheet, I'm gonna add an event and I'm gonna say system, every tick. So every frame of the game, we're going to add an action and we're going to say text two, which is the text we just created. And we're going to set the text and we're going to set the text to say track. And then I'm going to put in colon and then a space. And then after the closing quotation marks, I'm going to put the and symbol and I'm going to write track because I want it to display what track we're on. Because now, if you remember, we coded in the skip button to add one to track. Now, when I hit skip, it tallies up the tracks, but we don't have 15, 16, 17 tracks, so we need to fix that next. We're going to add an event, and we're going to say system, and we're going to compare the variable of track. And we're going to say if it's greater than four, so if it goes to five, which is what we don't want, then we're going to say system, set value of track back to one. Now we need to tell the system that when we hit skip to go to the next song in the lineup. So the first thing we need to do when we hit skip is stop the song that's currently playing. So we're going to add an action and we're going to say audio and we're going to say stop, but not stop all, but we're going to say stop this time and we're going to say stop track and then we're going to put the and symbol in and push track. So we're going to stop whatever track we're currently on. Let's add in a, uh, a slight weight of 0.1 second, a very fractional weight, and then we're gonna to go to track. Then we're gonna add one to track. Then we're gonna um, then we're gonna select this whole block here with the skip, and we're gonna push B to do a sub-event. I'm gonna double click and we're gonna compare what track we're on. So we're gonna say system, compare variable. If the track is equal to one, and then we're gonna copy that out two more times and we're going to say if track is equal to two and if track is equal to three obviously we're not going to say four because if we're on track four and we hit skip we don't want to go anywhere because that's the last track in the lineup so if track is equal to one when we push skip then we're going to say audio 
play track two. Looping and the tag will be track two. Sorry, the tag will be track and track. So it's going to automatically say track two. Then I can copy this out and bring it down two more times and change this to track three and change this to track four. I'm going to take this add one to track and I'm going to put it in underneath each of these other tracks because otherwise how it's going to read is we're going to hit skip. It's going to stop the current track and then it's going to add one before it has a chance to read this track one. So it's automatically going to go to two and then three. So by adding it in afterwards, after we've changed the track, and again, we can copy that 0.1 seconds in between each of those to give it a chance to play it before we change it. And that should be fine. And now what you'll notice is we can skip through the tracks just fine, but we're not stopping we're not stopping the previous track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this stop um, command up here and I'm going to take this 0.1 second and I'm going to drag it down into each of these. So I'm going to do it before we change the track to anything else. So now when we hit skip, if we're on track one, we're going to stop whatever track we're on. We're going to wait a split second and then we're going to play the next track. Okay, let's just try and change this. Instead of saying stop the track, let's stop all instead. And there we go, we can cycle through the tracks just fine. I think it just wasn't reading the right track because we were changing, we were adding one to the track and we were telling it to, st um, to stop the track and use the global variable to track it. And I think it was getting confused with these add ones. So you'll notice one thing that if I hit skip, when I get to track four, I can no longer skip back to one because we haven't put that in over here. So what we need to do is copy, copy that whole block, change track three to track four, and then change track four back to track one. And now we'll be able to just loop around them infinitely. So you'll see there that I skip through the tracks. If I hit stop, when I push play again, it doesn't change the track number back to track one. So let's fix that. So the first thing I'm gonna add is a condition to skip because at the moment when I push skip, if there's no music playing, it acts as a play button. I don't want that, that to be the case. I only wanna be able to skip tracks if we're already playing music. So like we did with the is any playing, I'm just going to hold down control, I'm going to drag that out and I'm going to nest it in underneath in the same block as skip. So now we're only going to be able to use the skip control if there's actually music playing. So you can see there I'm clicking it, it doesn't work and that's exactly what I want. Now when I hit stop, it leaves it on track three and when I hit play again, like we mentioned before, it takes us back to track one. So what I need to do when I hit stop is along with stop all and set pause to false, I just need to say system set value of track back to one. The last thing I need to fix on here is this condition that says if we hit pause, only toggle the pause if something's playing. That's making it so that when we try and unpause, it's not working because obviously we pause it and nothing's playing. So instead of toggling pause, I'm just gonna say if, if something is playing, then we set the boolean of paused to true. I'm gonna copy the whole block and then I'm gonna invert 
is playing, is any playing, uh, I'm going to invert it and I'm going to change this to say false. And the very last thing we need to add in is just one more condition to play. We're going to say audio is any playing and I'm going to invert it. So I don't want to be able to play the song more than once if it's already playing. So when we click play, if nothing is playing, and then we can play the tracks. And we can play, we can pause, we can unpause, we can stop, we can play, we can skip tracks. And that's how we make a little music player adding sound and some UI controls in Construct 3. If you found the tutorial useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you want to see more tutorials on Construct 3, then hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video.